Uh, you'll see how that goes a little bit later. Presently, right now, if you will, say hello to Mr. Paul Schaefer and the world's most dangerous band. Yeah. Hello, Paul. Yes. Good evening, David Letterman. Without exaggeration, the weirdest one tonight. This Thank is going to be weird. It is. It's exciting. It's our first 90 minute. I guess the word extravaganza has never more been more suitable than it is tonight. I got one of those coats on. Uh, I can't sit down until I do this. Thank you very much. If you've ever seen this television program before, you're aware of the fact that once a week we like to take actual viewer mail and share it with our actual viewers. So we're going to do a little bit of that right now. Once again, mail we have actually received, written by actual viewers. Here we go. Viewer mail number one comes to us from Maggie Sokolik. I'm just guessing at that name, Sokolik, from Santa Monica, California, one of the most beautiful places on the earth. Maggie asks, how come when you call people on the telephone, they are always home? <laughs> Yeah, let's call Maggie and see if she's home, shall we? Of course, the area code is 213. This is just down the street from my old home. And let's see if Maggie is home. Paul, what time would it be now in California? Actually, uh, it's three hours earlier there. Right? Would be about three hours earlier, yeah. 2.30. About 2.30. We're calling ring number one. Uh, the jackpot is $600. The count is four from the top. Ring number two. Maggie's one chance to find out why the people we talk to on the phone are always home. <laughs> Ring number three for Maggie. There's, what do you think, two more and she's a ghost? <laughs> and coming up on her final ring, that means we put another 150 in the jackpot. That's it for Maggie. We'll never know why the folks we call are always at home. Letter number two comes to us from David Gears. David writes, uh, we don't have a return address for David. Uh, it's not required. I think it would be a great asset if you could have Julia, parentheses, child, parentheses. I guess that means Julia child as opposed to a son or daughter of Julia. Uh, appear on the show and give us some tips. This is a good letter. Give us some tips on midnight snack ideas. Popcorn is fine, but a little chocolate mousse couldn't hurt. Boy, it certainly couldn't hurt. Well, we couldn't contact Julia child on short notice. Uh, we did, however, get a hold of the head of the NBC executive dining room. His name is Joe Grippy. Joe, thank you for being here. And you have actually cooked for Grant Tinker and many of the NBC stars. And you are here tonight to show us how to prepare soup from a can. Okay, Joe, take it away. Very simple. Open the can, pour in the pot, grab the spoon, start stirring it. It's nice and warm. It's delicious, and it's good for you. Just keep reminding yourself, this is network television, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, Joe. I appreciate that. Soup from a can. Letter number three comes to us from, uh, oh, there's one of these people with one name here. This is Showban or Stobar. <laughs> Uh, says, I love you and Edward Newman, Edwin Newman, NBC Newsman. You should become a team. That's interesting. Ed Newman and me a team. That's, boy, I don't, gee, I wonder what that would, boy, I just, me and Ed Newman, I can hardly imagine. And now, the Yuck Yucks Comedy Showcase is Thank proud you. to present the comedy much. team oh. of Newman uh, well, and they, Letterman. They have a great baseball team here at NBC. Oh, yes, we do. Why don't you tell me the names of the players? All right, we have uh, who's on first, what's on second, and I don't know on third. What did you say? We have who's on first, what's on second, I don't know on third. Well, David, what you're saying is not grammatical. You, you wouldn't say what's on second. A baseball player is a person, not an object. And I don't know's on third makes no sense. And what you meant to ask me is who's on first, who's on second, who's on third. Yeah, I, I wasn't asking, I was telling you. Telling me what? Who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. That's just plain wrong. <laughs> Why, you, it's just a gag. I'm reading off the players. <laughs> hey, Newman. Oh. 
Must have dozed off there. Well, uh, our, I believe this may be our final letter. John Redshaw from Ice Slip, New York writes, Hey, what happened to Plan 9 from Outer Space? I have been waiting with bated breath for weeks for the next action-packed installment of this masterpiece of bad motion picture making. Please return us to this incredible film. I agree completely, John. It's about time. Uh, once again, it's time to put your feet up on the dog and relax with a cup of your favorite bedtime beverage as we present... <laughs> Nightcap Theater. A feature especially designed for that segment of the audience that can only watch one minute of an old movie at a time. And now, installment number four of our science fiction classic, Plan 9 from Outer Space. Did you hear anything? I thought I did. Don't like hearing noises, especially when ain't supposed to be any. Yeah, sort of spooky like. Maybe we're getting old. Whatever it is, it's gone now. That's the best thing for us, too. Gone. Yeah, let's go. You could cut the electricity in here with a knife. Be with us again next time when flying saucers land, vampires rise, and it's another typical day in the San Fernando Valley on... Nightcap Theater. Oh, heavens. We're going to pause now. We'll be right back with stupid pet tricks. But first, intermission. <laughs> A popcorn is nutritious, you will find it mm. delicious. Most anything that you would care to eat. Cooling drinks that are so grand, simply name your favorite friend. Or some ice cream so good and helpful too. If you feel you need nutrition, now's the time. It's intermission. Step right up, we have the very best for you.